was somebody that, uh, from a young age, was very uh, depressed, very depressed Christian. And I didn't know I was a depressed Christian. I just thought everybody felt the way I felt. And, uh, well, um, it's a chain of events that happened. Uh, well, I'll, uh, I'll, just, I'll just pick up where going to this New Jersey conference. Before I went to the New Jersey, New Jersey conference, I, uh, I always talked to the Lord. I asked him to uh, heal me, take this away. And uh, it just didn't seem like it was ever happening. And I, it was, uh, that is one prayer I always had. The other prayer I always had was the Lord, ask the Lord to uh, grow my hair back. <laughs> that hasn't happened yet. But he did feel me more. The story of, um, I was the person who was a, a mental health patient. I was, uh, I would go to mental health on a regular basis because uh, I had depression problems. So I didn't, it gradually got worse in my life. From a young age to getting old, in my 20s, it just got worse and worse in my 20s. I just, I couldn't, uh, couldn't work anymore. I couldn't be really a husband. I couldn't be a dad without being on medication. So I used to be really ashamed of this. There would only be a few different people in my life that actually knew the story about me. I kept it hidden. Because in my way, you think of me as a mental health patient. There's a lot of, uh, is there a lot of stigma? Yeah. Now, it goes comes to that. So, but now I really talk to people about my testimony all the time, whenever I get a chance to, because Christians shouldn't have to go around living like this. There's a scripture in the Bible that, that talks about, I think you touched on it, um, he, Jesus came to give his life and life more abundantly. And I never, I always struggled with that, because I read that scripture mm -hmm. and I look at my life, and, and I always say to myself, I'm not understanding something, or the Bible's not true. So I knew the Bible was true, so I I always, I always go back to, well, it's not understanding something. So, uh, we, uh, we went to Jen's um, conference in New Jersey. It was, I wasn't even actually thinking of going for me. I was going for one of, for one of my daughters. And um, it was there when I realized, started to learn about uh, more about deliverance. I learned about little bits of it when I was younger through uh, just like that. We used to get on the radio a lot. Bob Larson? Bob Larson. But it, there was no practical teaching and no way to be able to implement it in my life. So anyway, we went through that conference and uh, I didn't realize it was really going to be at that point in life it was really more for myself and my wife, my children, it was for them too, but it was hitting us first, you know, we were, we were the ones that was hitting us the most, so I, uh, from what I learned, I, I, from what I was watching, how this man deceived us out, I, after, I, I wasn't able to really get in line, there's so many people that wanted to get delivered, I just pushed myself towards the front which in hindsight I should have, I should have been in the front row, right up here. And I should have been making sure nobody's getting ahead of me. <laughs> kind of like in school when the, when the bell's about to ring, you want to be the first one out the door. <laughs> so, but I, from what I learned, I, I went home, and on the way to work, I lived in a I was going to Liverpool, got a way to Liverpool, I was, uh, it's about a 45 minute drive. So the first uh, 20 minutes I started to, uh, the reality was, it had already hit me. I, it's like, I, it's, it's not a chemical imbalance, it's a doctor's thing. I'm, I'm, I'm really feeling like this is, I'm really on to something here. I really believe that deliverance is for, uh, for uh, uh, Christians. And we shouldn't have to live this way. So. I'm, so I'm, I'm very convinced at this point. So I, I started to uh, command these evil spirits to leave me, leave my life. 
and in the drive to say the Fulton Spout up there. About a 20 minute drive. When I got to that 20 minute mark over and over again, man, these evil spirits just come out of me. Stuff that was really happening. I wasn't seeing anything happening, I wasn't feeling anything happening, I kept going. But after I guess once I got to that 20 minute mark, I just started to uh, I would describe it as getting sick, but I didn't feel sick. I just I can tell my body wanted to throw up. So I you know I wasn't a sick, like a flu kind of sick. So it just hit me really fast. I started to, I started to dry heave over and over again. I couldn't catch my breath. Tears were running down my face. I was trying to drive at the same time, and this was happening. And I instantly felt different. I instantly felt great. It felt wonderful. I didn't feel depressed. And I, I described it before as uh, went from being depressed on these medications to. Uh, feeling like I was, uh, you know, when you're in the last day of school, you have summer while waiting. Mm. When you're, when you look at the clock and the bell's about to ring, and you get that feeling of, oh, I have fun this whole summer. Oh, oh, yeah. So I instantly had that. Mm. It, was, it was just a wonderful feeling. Oh, so uh, prior to that, through the years, I would try to. I would try to get off medication by by uh, by uh, research online. I would try to eat healthy, you know, thinking maybe that would maybe it's maybe that's what's my problem. I'm not eating healthy, so I would leave myself off the medication. That crash, and I wouldn't wouldn't be able to work. I wouldn't be able to move. I'd be in bed. It'd be like that for like a month until I get the medication back in me. I tried different things to try to, uh, different things I read, different tricks to try to not be depressed, and uh, nothing really worked. And I would always uh, crash. I wouldn't be able to work. We, and I'd have to stay at home for like a month. We'd go through our savings until that I get the medicine back in me. We're good. Yeah. So this time, when I went, when I did this self-deliverance, it, uh, I didn't go through that. I didn't need the pills anymore. Hallelujah. Thank you. The sad part is I was deceived all these years. Yes. I was deceived. I thought I bought into what the psychiatrist across the desk to tell me. I'm sorry to tell you that you're going to have to get this medication all your life. Uh, it's, a, it's a lie. Christians shouldn't have to take the medications. If you're on a psychiatric medication, and I'm sure it's the way you are, you don't have to be. You don't have to be. So, uh, but three and a half years, I, I love not and I have to take pills all day long. Well, mine's a little different. <laughs> uh, mine comes more from a perspective of um, having a religious spirit. Closer. And I was watching Fred and what he was going through, and what he would do a lot during the time he was home is he'd watch a lot of deliverance videos. <laughs> and I, it always really bothered me. I didn't like it playing. It bothered me inside. Um, I, it made me feel fear whenever he would play the videos. Um, I'd always think, I remember him watching one of John George's older videos where he was outside delivering somebody and he was laughing while he was doing it. And now I understand why because I know you so well. <laughs> but uh, um, I, uh, I was like, this is fake. Like, he's laughing. Like, this guy isn't getting delivered. It, it, this stuff is fake. How do you know when this stuff is real? And um, I just had a lot of religious thinking about demons and the spiritual world and so because of that I just didn't like to think about it at all. Mm -hmm. So one thing that um, always bothered me in God's word that I, I feel like I need to share is that um, 
how Jesus says, be perfect as I am perfect. And I always was like, how can Jesus say that if I'm always carrying across the pulpit that we can never be perfect? We can never, you know, we're always going to be in our flesh, like John was saying. And um, that's just unattainable. Then why would he say that? I, I always struggle with that. So one day, Fred's watching one of John George's videos, and I think it was the one that he does, like a general deliverance prayer. And so I'm struggling with this, and I'm sitting in bed, and all of a sudden, I mean, I've struggled with many different things during my life. One of the biggest things I struggled with was insecurity. And he hits that in the video, and he calls out insecurity. And as soon as he said that, my hands came together like this, like they're handcuffed. And I could not pry them apart. And I'm sitting there like going, what is happening right now? I couldn't believe it. Like, I was like, okay, this is this is really happening right now. So I could turn to Fred and I go, probably falling asleep. And I go, replay it, replay it. And I'm going through deliverance right now. Like, I can't even believe it. This is happening to me. And so he like he's replaying the video and I'm going through it, going through it, and you know it just got to a point where I just you know I just need to stop because I don't I'm like terrified I don't know what's happening I don't know where to go from here you know, but that made me so excited to go and see John when I came to his um, deliverance um, in New Jersey, so I went to New Jersey and. I felt that feeling as he was as he was getting ready to minister rising up inside me, and I go, "This is familiar. I know exactly what this is." And so I'm standing there, like Fred said, there's lots of other people that we're getting, you know, ministered to. And all of a sudden, John goes, "Where's Lee?" <laughs> and I go, "I'm over here." And he goes, "Lee, get up here!" And it was so like that was one of like I'm like up front, like up in the very front, in front of everybody. <laughs> And so he sat me down right in front of everybody, and he goes, what are you struggling with? And I said, insecurity. And so John said, that's one of the things that sometimes you need to go through, is you need to push through the thing that the demons are trying to keep you bound by, and then you can be set free. So I went through this really not pretty deliverance in front of everybody else. But I'll never forget um, what happened when the demon left me. Um, it was like, it was a feeling I'd never felt before of complete, clear communion between me and God. There was nothing keeping me separated from him. And I can't even explain to you how exciting that is. I, it, there's nothing that compares to it. And so I was just like on cloud nine the rest of the night. Like, like I just want to share this with everybody. Yeah. Like, I can't believe that this is what Christianity is really doing. Yeah. 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 I was raised in a Christian home. I've been through it. You know, I I know everything. I did everything A, B, and C I was supposed to do growing up, and I never experienced it. And so now, like, it's really cool because I continue to seek deliverance because yes. the Bible says that you can have parts light and parts dark. Yeah. And so we are to seek to have no parts dark. And so I continue to seek having no parts dark, and as I'm doing that, more and more things are opening up in my life. I, I a couple few weeks ago gave, I had the anointing fall on me, and if you've never experienced that, <laughs> let me tell you, that is, that is the power right there. Yes. And I started, I gave a word from God in church, I've never done that. Um, I, I get dreams now. The Lord speaks to me in dreams. Um, I, I, I just have this communion with him where he speaks to me. And he said, I don't like that. Like, I'll, I'll be doing something or saying something, and he'll be like, no, this is, not, this is something that separates you from me. And I never had that communion with him now. And back and forth, it was always, and I, I found that it made me a fearful person. Because I didn't have that communion back and forth with him, 
I was always like, well, what should I do? I don't know what I should do in this hard situation. I don't know what I should do with this person I'm having a hard time with. What do I do, Lord? And I was always feel like I, I never heard from him back. Like, how do, what do I do in that, with this? But now I don't struggle with that at all anymore. It's not. It, and another thing that I want to share is that how much God's word has come to life in my life. I there is, like he was saying, there is a spiritual reading that comes with God's word that you can just read it as a religious thing and God can still speak to you in it. But then there's this whole, whole nother power in God's word. That's it. That you can experience by having that spiritual awakening. Eyes being open and ears being open. Yeah, like Jesus yeah. always talks about in the New Testament. You have eyes that you don't see and ears that you don't hear. And I don't want that. I tell them that every day. I want the ears to hear and the eyes to see. And I don't want the religion anymore. Amen. Amen. So um, I wanted them to come up and share because this was this was really spontaneous. I mean, the last time we came up, and even after that, when we were passing through, when we were doing our conference in New Jersey and then in Canada, we drove through here again. And we've, we've spent time with this family. Uh, we, we stopped and spent, you know, a day with them and we've become friends with them. And just on this past trip up, you know, as I'm on the phone with Fred and I'm like, hey, I want to get together while we're there. You know, he just says, he says, John, just out of the blue. He says, do you realize that my wife has never been the same since that New Jersey conference? Yeah. This, that's, when, that's when you know it's real. Yeah. yeah. Like when the people around the people, it's, so, it's not just an internal knowing where you know, but it's so visible. It's so real that it's actually visible all around you. Come on. That's Come on. when it's real. 